Today, I will introduce three methods of meditation. The Buddha taught 84,000 different ways to tame and pacify the negative emotions. To put it simply, negative refers to emotions and afflictions. In Buddhism, there are countless methods of meditation. Three meditation techniques are particularly effective in the modern world that anyone can practice and benefit from. They are watching the breath, using an object, and reciting a mantra or a Buddha's name. Number one, watching the breath. The first method is very ancient and found in all schools of Buddhism. It is to rest your attention lightly and mindfully on the breath. If watching the breath is difficult for you, you can count the breaths instead, as counting can be simpler. If your mind is too scattered, or you have never practiced meditation, you can count your breaths from 1 to 10, then from 10 to 1. By repeating this several times, you will gradually stop counting and begin to watch your breath. Breath is the most fundamental expression of our life. The Buddha said, Life exists in between breaths. In the teaching of Buddha, the breath is said to be the vehicle of the mind. The mind rides on the breath. By working skillfully with the breath, you can calm the mind quickly. If your breathing is even, your mental distractions and drowsiness will stop. Meanwhile, you are taming and training the mind. For beginners or lay practitioners with many tasks to take care of, the best way to calm the mind is watching the breath. When we are disturbed by anxiety or afflictions, To be alone for a few minutes and just breathe, in and out, deeply and quietly, can gradually relax our mind. Once the mind gradually calms down, introspection and mindfulness will naturally arise. At this point, it becomes easier for us to reflect on where we went wrong Carefully observe the mistakes in our mind, know how to repent, and perhaps even notice more subtle afflictions. Even such a simple exercise can help us a great deal. So when you meditate, breathe naturally, just as you always do. Focus your awareness lightly on the out-breath. Each time you breathe out, you are letting go and releasing all your grasping. Imagine your breath dissolving into the all-pervading emptiness. Each time you breathe out and before you breathe in again, you will find that there will be a natural gap as the grasping dissolves. Rest in that gap, in that open state. And when, naturally, you breathe in, don't focus especially on the in-breath, but go on resting your mind in the gap that is opened up. When breathing in, we can also mindfully meditate on plurality, impurity, impermanence, non-self and compassion with the methods we have learned. When breathing out, we can extend our mindfulness, which is a relaxed and released state. For example, when we meditate on impermanence, the impermanence of all phenomena, including our thoughts, and then breathe out, we will feel relaxed and released. 
when you are practicing, it's important not to get involved in mental commentary, analysis, or internal gossip. This is watching the breath. Don't mistake the running commentary in your mind, now I am breathing, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out, for mindfulness. This discrimination is not right. What is important is pure presence. For beginners, it's enough to place 75% of your attention on the breath and another 25% on mindfulness. After being mindful, you will slowly enter a relaxed, calm and spacious state. Gradually, you can just place 25% of your attention on the breath and the rest 75% is left abiding in a relaxed, calm and spacious state. As we become more mindful of our breathing, we will find that we become more and more present. Rather than watching the breath, let yourself gradually identify with it as if you were becoming it. Slowly the breath, the breather and the breathing become one. Duality and separation dissolve. We will find that this very simple process of mindfulness filters our thoughts and emotions. Then, as if we were shedding an old skin, something is peeled off and freed. Whether we experience desire or anger, the internal heat rises upward, causing the heart chakra to heat up. We start to feel restless, agitated, lost or heavy-headed. When afflictions such as desire and anger gradually pacify, the CV17 acupoint becomes cool, the lower dantian is warm and comfortable, and the upper body and the head are cool. This is the physical feeling while watching the breath. After the mind has calmed down, we can practice some mindfulness, which can help our mind enter a better state. Number two, using an object. The second method is to rest the mind lightly on an object. Many people find this method very useful. This method is also very effective. You can use an object of natural beauty that invokes a special feeling of inspiration for you, such as a flower or crystal. But something that embodies the truth, such as an image of the Buddha, or particularly our master, is even more powerful. Our master is our living link with the truth. Because of our personal connection to our master, just seeing his or her face connects us to the inspiration and truth of our own nature. If we have faith in our master, it will be like this. Just seeing his or her image connects us to the inspiration and truth of our own nature. Padmasambhava from the Holy Land of India came to Tibet in the 8th century. By the enormous power of his spiritual personality, he brought the teaching of Buddha to Tibet. We have a special connection with Padmasambhava because northern Buddhism is also prevalent in Tibet and Padmasambhava is also the patriarch of the Vajrayana tradition. In reality, he is the emanation of the Shakyamuni Buddha's body, Amitabha Buddha's mind and Avalokiteshvara's speech. Dilgo Kiensi Rinpoche said, The one who has the greatest compassion and blessing toward 
beings in this difficult age is Padmasambhava, who embodies the compassion and wisdom of all the Buddhas. One of his qualities is that he has the power to give his blessing instantly to whoever prays to him. And whatever we may pray for, he has the power to grant our wish immediately. If we have faith in Padmasambhava, we can meditate on his image. The second method is to use an object, and we can use the image of Padmasambhava as the object of meditation. People with faith can eliminate their negative karma by looking at a Buddha image. Even a single glance at a dignified Buddha image can eliminate boundless negative karma. If you look at a Buddha image and prostrate with joy, devotion, reverence and absolute faith, you can quickly eliminate negative karma. You should look at the image clearly, connect by heart, and then prostrate. This can quickly eliminate negative karma. When prostrating, I notice that some people remain lying on the ground for a long time without getting up. This is not good. If you feel tired when prostrating, you can stand there with your palms together, visualize the Buddha image clearly, generate Buddha Chitta, and then prostrate again. When prostrating, you should almost never stop, but should get up in a second at most. If you feel tired after lots of prostrations, you can stand and visualize carefully for a little longer and then prostrate again. You cannot stay lying on the ground without getting up. It's wrong. Regarding the second method, you can look at the image of your guru, patriarchs, or Buddhas and Buddhasattvas. This is also a very good method. We can add prostration to this method. After standing and visualizing for a moment, then make a prostration, which is pretty good. This is the second method. Number three, reciting a mantra. The third technique is uniting the mind with the sound of a mantra. Mantras convey the great compassion and vows of Buddhas and Buddhasattvas and express the truth in the form of sound. Each syllable is impregnated with spiritual power, condenses a spiritual truth and vibrates with the blessing of the speech of the Buddhas. Reciting a mantra can let the mind and the mantra become one. The power of mantras can purify the subtle channels of the body, protect us, and prevent our mind from falling into negative states. Reciting a mantra requires devotion. What matters is not how many times you have recited, but what kind of state you are in. Attitude is the most important. Before reciting a mantra, we need to have a good theoretical foundation, such as a deep belief in causality, good renunciation, compassion, and buddhacitta. The more clearly you understand these teachings, the better. If you are very narrow-minded and selfish, without renunciation and bodhicitta, you will easily attract external maras when reciting mantras. If we generate bodhicitta and connect with Buddhas and Buddhasattvas, then reciting mantras would be supreme. Therefore, when reciting mantras, we must generate bodhicitta. The better your Buddha Chitta is, and the more wisdom of emptiness you have, the more connection you have with Buddhas and Buddhasattvas. In addition, when reciting mantras, we must calm down, recite by heart, and look inward.
we should hear each syllable clearly. If our mind is wandering, we cannot hear it clearly. Even though we have recited a mantra, if the mind is wandering, we cannot connect to it. The mantra I recommend is Amitabha Buddha's name and the Mani mantra. The choice depends on who your deity is and which Buddha or Buddhasattva you have the most faith in. This is the key. The virtues of the mantras of Buddhas and Buddhasattvas are equally supreme. Some people's deity is Amitabha Buddha, so they can recite his name or mantra. Some people like to recite the Mani mantra, which is the mantra of Avalokiteshvara. If you have strong faith in Padmasambhava, you can recite Padmasambhava's mantra. In some places, it's recited as but usually we recite In this violent, chaotic age, these mantras are so powerful for peace, for healing, for transformation and for protection. We pray and recite with devotion. Recite the mantra quietly, with deep attention, and let our breath, the mantra, and our awareness slowly become one. Or chant in an inspiring way, and rest in the profound silence that sometimes follows. This means to chant continuously with visualization, and then abide. This is the third method. 